Hey everyone, welcome back. It is Lucid and I'm joined once again by Sakane. Hello everybody. We are back. It is turn 27. Something? <laughs> Something, yes. And as you can see, not much is happening. Uh, as much promised, we are entering a bit of a dormant phase. So I had never noticed that Dongerland sent us a tiny, tiny death basket. <laughs> oh, I never noticed this either. Oh no, this wasn't a death basket. We... We were yep. forging items for him. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Um, he, yes. And this, this is like, I I was not doing this in any way despite these guys. I'm friends with the Dongerland people. Um, and they were very, you know, like I told you, I think I mentioned this in the last episode. They were like, hey, if we fight this off, can we go back and fight these guys for our land back and we'll leave you alone? And I was like, sure. And they're like, mm. you care if we buy some items off of you? And I was like, yeah, sure. Just let me know what you need. Um, and we charged him just normal friend rates, which is the, um, the thing in a profit, uh, the thing. So we weren't in any way donating stuff to him, but mm -hmm. yeah, but we weren't overcharging, right? Yeah, it's we weren't overcharging. Thing. Um, and for very, I mean, I do want, I'm interested. The I see Mammon is such a big threat, and the other news we get this turn, and I, I think you were mentioning Zach, it's probably time to talk about, I don't remember the exact timing but uh of when we learn this but yeah but arcarios has won or Anc Ancria Ancriarchos has won um which is the uh the Lestragonians these were the ones we did not want to win mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning of the game I was worried that GC and Balin would beat them so quickly that they would just be really big and really strong way faster than everybody else and they could kind of snowball that was my concern at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. Because but, they have Knights of the Deep, which are right. not a concern for us, right? Well, yeah. I mean, they're not a concern for us. Um, but, I mean, anybody getting that big that quick can be kind of destabilizing for the game. So I mm -hmm. didn't... I wanted them to win, but I wanted them to win slowly. <laughs> right. Um, however, that is not what happened. Instead, Ankarios has won. And... Um, I think it's, they shared, uh, they were not telling anybody anything about what was happening until really it was almost all over. And then we kind of got, they spilled the beans and told us what happened. And basically what happened is Balin and GC had a strength bless, like a big old strength bless, a strength bless such that no super combatant or thug underwater is going to hold up to a lance charge, even with fluffing and stuff on them. Mm -hmm. I think they had magic weapon and maybe a few other things, but um, anyway, they go running at them and they have a fair number of Knights of the Deep, maybe 20 or 10 or 15. I don't know the number, um, but if you watch GC's channel, I, I'm assuming he'll put this up here. Um, and I, it's kind of funny, actually, because I had been talking a little bit with these guys before the game started. And I was like, how like, guys, what the fuck were y'all doing in your draft? Like, how on Not earth are you ever going to hold? And right. they were like, well, I guess we're just going to have to hope they walk into a big PD dump on our capital. And, of course, I, I try anytime anybody tells me anything that I would consider, like, sensitive... Um, usually I'm going to try... I mean, not usually. I'm going to try to not share that ever, really. Like, so I'm not going to be like, hey, Balin, be careful. There's a PD dump on their cap. Like, make right. sure you ping it. You know? Which... <laughs> it might have been good for the game state if I did that, Sakane, because <laughs> they ran those Knights of the, the Deep right into that PD dump, and they lost their first big squad. Um, and then after that, I think Ankarios was down land, um, and these guys were looking to make the kill before like all the Titan and stuff really came online, when mm. it would be harder. And what ended up happening was these guys put together a sizable army and went past the, and I'm not even sure who's on which side, to be honest, but went past the the GC Ballin army that was waiting to kill them. They they basically got between that army and GC and Ballin's capital. Mm -hmm. And they started making a run for their capital. And when GC and Balin saw that, they, they had a decision they could make. Do we run back and try to intercept it and then potentially give up some of our good position here? 
Or do we say, this is our opportunity. Let's take all the Knights of the Deep and hit their cap. And do you want to guess which one they did? Uh, I don't know. I think they... Hmm. I guess they tried to hit the cap. They hit the cap. And do you know what was in the cap? Even more PD. No. Well, I think it was, yeah, there was already a big PD dump, but it was the god. And the god... Oh, was it a dormant? It was some kind of block. I'm not sure what kind it was. I think it was a Beetle of some kind. Okay. But it had like two or 300 HP and 30 protection. <laughs> or like 35 <laughs> protection. Like something super stupid and dumb. Yeah, something stupid, yeah. <laughs> And they just, they, they couldn't kill it. <laughs> yeah. They just splat it on <laughs> They just splat it off. And they lost a bunch. Of, I think they cut off retreat routes too, because yeah, yeah. that was, and that's just a mistake that GC and Balin made, I think. But, um, and that was it. They lost their doom stack. They couldn't kill the God and the retreat routes got cut off. And meanwhile, what they were doing by going on the cap was they were saying, we're going to get on top of your cap and we're going to have such success doing it that and we'll be able to kill enough stuff when you go on our cap that we'll be able to keep this under siege and then march a par portion of our army back to kill you that's what they were thinking yeah exactly and which honestly it makes sense because they had it the way they had defended their cap the first time was with a pd dump so if they had succeeded in taking the cap the second time that was like a lost sure. investment right? yeah it wasn't so like a you yeah you could see the logic yeah 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 i mean they weren't they weren't being idiots by any means mm -hmm. but uh, they certainly uh, got wrecked. <laughs> you know, it just the, the it strength just plus wasn't strong enough. It wasn't strong enough. Strength. They needed more strength. Yeah. Eight, I think it was plus eight or ten or something. It wasn't enough. Um, but yeah, and you know the lance charges probably broke on the PD too. I'm sure if they got the yeah. lance charges on the god, they might have gotten him. But um, but yeah, so that was it. That was because now they basically had their cap under siege at the same turn they lost the doom stack. That's basically checkmate. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem with these guys winning is that they are the nation that is super fucking scary as... Wait, that's not these guys. Um, they are super fucking scary if you're a land nation <laughs> bordering them. Bordering you're, them. You're going to have... I mean, it's like Godzilla. You're going to have these huge monsters crawling out of the water and these small little thugs who are either going to be buffing the monsters or raiding on their own. And probably the best amphibious troop in the game combined with one of the best amphibious mages in the game. Like, coming out of the water and messing with any of the coastal nations... I mean, if there's one thing, I mean, our we were very sad that we spawned next to Manon, right? Yeah. But man, am I glad we did not spawn coastal. Yeah. Because this is going to be like Pacific Rim for 50 turns. Yeah, like, it really is. Like... It really is. It's going to be so shitty. Um, so that is a big development. And mm -hmm. the, our primary concerns are merging into like containment of the, these guys and containment of mammon and we have to be very careful because if we get too big i mean on one hand these guys who are probably in position one and um two i'm not sure exactly the order these guys provide cover for us so that people won't yeah. attack us right because we I are think, in a position yeah, to like so check mammon Right. Exactly. So, so from our perspective, the underwater conglomerate is like an indirect late game threat, right? Because we can't do much about them, right. but they could expand and grow out of control. Manon is both a late game scaling threat because they scale very well, just like us. But they're also an immediate threat because they're our neighbor. <laughs> and right. like, if they feel they're stronger than us, they could try to come and attack us. But it's also very important to point out that from the point of view of every other player in the game, they will see us as a game-ending threat in the late game because of our build. There's, yeah. I mean, there are parts of it that they haven't figured out, but even the transparent parts... I mean, we have Royal Malqui and Shaden. Like, there's nothing... And, and Communicants. Like, right. it's once we get to Thaumaturgy 9, it's like... GG. Right? Yeah. So... Everybody knows that. Now, it's not GG if we have like eight provinces, right? Then right. you just like. <laughs> so, you know, from our point of view, 
we see two existential threats. But most other players... C3. See us as an existential threat, <laughs> yeah. no matter how small we are, just right. because of our build. And but, it's not entirely wrong, but that's like, there's some like, uh, um, we need to have very good PR, right? <laughs> right. Well, I think <laughs> to, we have to walk a line because exactly it's, you know, I think some people say like, oh, well, why wouldn't people just kill you? And it's because it wouldn't be that fucking easy. Like, we have oh, yeah. been printing GARMs like the Federal Reserve prints money. We've just been slamming the GARM button, you know? And we have the ability to, like, we could have 30, with with our little communicants who we can refresh to power up our communion, uh, we can turn 36 um, blood slaves into... Um, Nine million uh, imps. Yeah, a million imps is the number. Thank you for doing the math. Um, and so a million imps plus our skeletons, plus our gam herdings. Um, and then also, if we ever see anything that we potentially can thug with an air melquirt, um, prepare to get deleted, you know? Um, and, and that's just before... And again, you have to put yourself in the shoes of another player. They don't know when the shaitans are coming online how many they have like presumably right. at this point it would be too early that's correct yeah but, there's no way we'd have shaitans now but right but if somebody started a war with us now how long do they have before shaitans come online right like that's a yeah. question you have to be thinking of because if you're thinking oh i can kill them in five turns fine you're just going to attack no, but, yeah i mean but I, I think my thing is like it would be very very hard to kill us and <laughs> Um, we also, you have to understand what killing us would, would mean. Like if Satalis and these guys could kill us right now, very quickly, it might be okay, but these guys are also within a turn or two going to be done and Lace Dragonian Tyrants are going to be pouring everywhere, probably to kill the Joman themed nation next, but mm -hmm. You know, and if they destabilize us and Mammon gets a big part, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, um, well, they're honestly, I think the, uh, the I think nations like Satalis are hoping that our nation, which scales very well, is going to counterbalance the Manon nation yeah. that also scales very well, which is kind of fine by That's us. That's kind but of what like, we're trying to do too. Yeah, like yeah. we, I, I think if we go to war with anybody aside from Mammon and Mammon backstabs us, then they win the game. Yes. So Agreed. we basically, I think that's how you and I have, and this is probably going to be the mindset that's going to go through the next 10 turns is we are looking at ourselves as a, like a power block against Mammon that's going to sit here and look threatening and keep Mammon from getting too big while we also power up. Because, yeah, but like, this is yeah. a cold war basically is brewing, right? Right. Um, the problem with this cold war is that we do not have weak neighbors that we can inconsequentially eat to grow our power and our economy and our strength. Right. Um, whereas uh, Manon does, because as we alluded to in uh, yeah. the last episode, um, his north and south neighbors have been fighting each other quite a lot. Yeah, his um, north and south neighbors are super weak right now. They've just been just having a grudge fight since the beginning of the game, and mm -hmm. fail. You know, they're not. Neither of them are big, and they've been fighting each other. And I think our weakest neighbor would be Vinland. Mm -hmm. But there's just so many reasons not to fight them. If we if we fought them, we would get a board a new border with these guys, which I would not be very excited about having. Yep. I think it would be a reasonably hard fight. I think we would win. I think we could outright conquer them if we wanted to. Um, but if we were successful, and I think this is always what you have to ask yourself, like if you're successful in your endeavor, what do you win? I think we would easily get coalitioned by everybody then. If Manon didn't just outright declare war on us as soon as we declared war on yeah, yeah. Finland, right. right? Which they could also do. Which they could also do. Um, and probably get people to help. So instead, we're positioning ourselves, and not just positioning, we are actively moving troops to the border and stuff over the next few turns, you'll see it, to basically be a power block against Mammon 
so that he doesn't eat this whole corridor. Because I think this turn two, maybe in the next turn, he's going to attack Pinpappy, which is the Morvark Nation. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be like a, I don't know, a three or four turn war. Um, they they weren't very good, I will say, about telling us that they were getting attacked. Um, this is for some more gear. 20 death gems from Satalis. I can't remember what we gave him for this. Probably Earth. <laughs> Who knows? Probably Earth. If we're trading away any gems, it's probably Earth gems. Um, found some more sites. This is, uh, I think, a death and water... I think it's I think it's an air. Yeah. Um bunch of events. We're not going to take time to go through those. Um Yeah, these guys are yeah. getting crushed. Um I this is still under siege. I I suggest why don't we actually we should just show off our our underwater our scuba milk cart kit that's going to go Oh yeah. Like, Cuz that looks that looks like that's this turn. Yeah. Uh, so we just gave him a vine shield. We went with a stinger because we were too, uh, we skimped. We could have gone lightning spear, but it was faster to do the stinger. Uh, piercing and, weapons and, because we're underwater. And gems, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Although our air income is surprisingly good also. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so piercing weapon because underwater, um, length four with our attack and, uh, uh, yeah, we'll be repelling Bless is a just lot. Good. It's just repelling yeah. everything. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, ring of regen, reinvigoration, fear hat. Yeah, this is probably a little gems. overkill. But what yeah. we're we're actually putting him on a weird script. We're putting him on this and then spells, um, which is not how you would expect this guy scripted. And that's because there's a chance you know he's been sending uh, scuba undead. There's a, yeah. we're not worried at all about hitting this. I'm a little worried we get bogged down with. Like big si- the big size six long dead. Mm-hmm. And they'll hit really hard. They're not gonna get repelled. And if they've got like a caster behind them, there there could be trouble. So And they're like aren't they pierce resist, right? Because undead. Yeah. But yeah. if we this, hopefully the spells, you know, enough banishment can kill them faster than we will poking them. Mm. But uh, yeah, so that's that kit. Um, but honestly, yeah, I, I suggest we kind of roll through the turns. Let's look out for that ki- that uh, the remaining like the siege battles, right? And any yeah. th- other battles that we see. All right, so that's twenty eight. Um, we'll go to the next one, twenty nine. And <clears throat> a bit later. Uh, yeah, this is just workaday grind that's been happening between Elshu and Pinpappy. It's kind of cool. They yeah. reskinned the. Um, the herdlings. Oh, okay. I think into I think, the the TC like cavalry. Yeah. Like, I think it was Psy or something. I can't remember who. Somebody had a funny comment. They were saying they reskinned them to make them not look so scary, so that people wouldn't think <laughs> that they had hell herdings. That's funny. Yeah. Like, oh, don't mind us. It's just innocent medium cavalry. <laughs> nothing, nothing to be scared of. Move along. Uh, oh, this is a kind of cool battle. We didn't end up bumping. Oh, did he? We not give him an... I could have sworn I gave him an attack animation. Oh, well. I guess I didn't. Maybe I forgot for this guy. Oops. Uh, two That's damage it. coming in, nine regen. You can see it's not exactly close. Yeah, and it's not. It's all repels. Like it's also. Yeah. Right. It's not. It's not. The protection is very high. It's just all being repelled. 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 <laughs> repelled. Repelled. <laughs> repelled. Repelled. <laughs> oh, there's a miss. <laughs> repelled. Repelled. Yeah. Repelled. Yeah. Because the fear had two guys. Don't don't forget yeah. that. Um. So yeah, that's that's how that goes. Well, it repels and the vine shield too. So. Yeah. And his protection's not bad. I'm sure some things got blocked by protection, but I mean, this the 22 protection should block actually most of the hits if they occurred. Right? Yeah, if they occurred, and we did get hit a couple times, but yeah. yeah so we took that. No bumps. Um, 
Huey pings here, and the game has already switched now, where these guys um, have no chill button. Um, I believe they are... I haven't played a game. I kind of... They've been... They were in one of the Bosmos games. I think one of them was. But... Um, I, I, I don't know much about them. They, they're very chatty. And they seem to know a fair bit about the game. Um, but... I believe they are they are of the looter variety, and that <laughs> uh, they know no chill. They're always going to be fighting somebody uh, a lot, which I think is a right. It's an underwater nation. It's certainly not a bad way to play, but um, they've already decided they're going to vulture this, and I don't know if they've started yet. They're about to start attacking um, Huey, which is the, I think the duck themed German nation. Yeah. Um, I think also that, um, you know, Gripazan kind of got in there pretty quick, um, got into Huey, I mean. No, uh, no, this I think was theirs before. I don't think that started yet. Um, they're actually going to drag their feet okay. a little bit. That's good. That is oh, happening okay. in the future. So, but, but I think that it's, it's as good a time as any to talk about it. There's, I've been talking with all of our neighbors a fair bit, um, Pinpappy is like, I think he got attacked this turn or something. Maybe it's the next. It's very soon. And he's about dead. Um, and I think there's this turn, actually, the Mammon army is like right on top of the Pinpappy cap. I think it's right here. Um, and so he's like going to be dead in a turn or two. Um, but basically, I've been talking to people, and my worry is that Mammon is going to get this whole column. Because there's only weak people here. And the only person that's the only people that could really fight him are us and Satalis. But right now, Satalis doesn't have a border. So what I'm trying to do, I don't like you and I don't want to fight him for the same reason. Really, don't want to fight Satalis, and that it would be bloody. We would lose a lot, and if we won, then we would have a lot of other people attack us. And also, now is not the best time yes. in terms of our scaling to attack him. Right. Uh, we're going to be better off later when we have Shaitans online. Right. The problem is that he's scaling better in the sense that literally he's growing because if we don't attack him, he will kill more people right. and grow better that way. So it's a really uncomfortable dilemma. We can, we can scale by teching and being greedy, um, but he can scale by doing those things and also by mm, growing. People. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we've been talking with Satalis, and the thing is, them eating Elshu is fine. That's their first war. But if they go on, not Elshu, Pinpappy, if they go on to eat Elshu, which they certainly could, like the moment they kill Pinpappy, then we have to step in. Even though we don't feel ready, even though whatever. We have to do it, because if he gets all three... The, if he has this whole column, I think it's just over. They scale too hard. Um, we're going to have to make a play. And there's very... We don't really want to do that, but I think our hand is forced at that point. Um, so we've been talking to them, and they're kind of on board. They also kind of want to eat El Shu, which I'm honestly even okay with. Um, my worry is if they do it, then Mammon's going to vulture some. Um, and my other worry is if they do it, then they'll be big enough that they don't want to get any bigger, so they wouldn't help us against Mammon if we wanted to fight them. But, anyway. Um, I'm not in charge of what they do, though. But the the thing that we have agreed on for the time being is if um, Mammon makes a move past going on Pinpappy and they also go on El Shu we're going to pull the trigger and fight. And so in some sense, it's these two medium to smaller nations compared to Mammon that have said, okay, we're going to basically form a, a like a, a pact that we're going to control this if it starts getting out of control. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, um, we basically have um, two other small medium nations like Gripazon and um, Vinland. And they are dealing with... Um, you know, the repercussions of the underwater war. Now, Mammon technically also has to deal with it. However, in my opinion, 
these guys probably don't want to mess with Mammon because Mammon can come underwater with Long Dead. So they're probably fine having a peaceful border here. And why instead not just attack these guys who can't even mess with them? So these guys are looking, you know, like, okay, are they going to, you know, like, Vinland could come and take this stuff back. Vinland also right now, you know, they've got Master Smiths. So they're in, like, the, the Master Smith part of the game where it's, like, churning out research and all of this stuff. So they kind of probably would rather, they're a little bit like us in the sense they would probably rather pick some of the harder fights once they've had some tech unlocked. But they're also kind of too small right now, even though they won part of this war against the Dongers. Yeah, but you can see they barely, like, their coast is not theirs. Right, right? yeah. So um. what what we've been talking to them about, and some of this is just situational awareness of what's happening. Like, if, Mam if, the under if Mammon gets this whole column, and these guys get this whole column, and the rest of us are stuck with two per column then we're literally half the size of these guys, each individually. It's going to be a rough time. So mm -hmm. I kind of just went to everybody. I was like, what do y'all want to do in this situation? Like, if they get the whole columns, if each of these columns get taken by these nations, what do y'all want to do? We can either fight amongst ourselves so that we're, at, you know, when the dust settles, we're of equal size, or we can split up into two blocks. We're basically Satalus and us try to control Mammon, and you guys can try to try to control underwater. And everybody mm -hmm. liked this second idea better. Um, so yeah, that was a kind of long monologue. But that's like, the, I think, the, the diplomacy background going on here. Yeah. And, and the consequence of that is that our entire game plan is like, how do we beat Mammon at what and and also like at different time points right right so it's like if we had to fight him in five turns what would be what would we need to research and it's like okay what if we had to fight him in 12 turns what would we need to research yeah um well because we right, don't get to until, choose right if mammon goes yeah. on el shu we are going to pull the trigger um and so we want to figure out the research like when you're going construction six which is kind of greedy um, but by, and by the way, we didn't talk about it. We made a, f we traded for a bunch of death gems. We made a fair number of these skull mentors to help us get to construction six quickly. And mm -hmm. it saved probably like three or four turns or maybe not that many, probably like two or three turns on construction six timing. Um, yeah. We're, so we're getting construction six next turn, which yeah. is pretty early. Um, we have Buddhas. So lanterns are only two fire gems right. each for us, which is really nice. Yep. Um, okay, 30, uh, one third discount. And, uh, uh, well, and our hammers are cheaper no. too. So forging yeah. them, you know, that's true. Actually, yeah, hammers are. kind of stacks um, a little bit. And, uh, and in terms of research, the, f certainly the first thing we decided was that after construction six, aside for like, you know, some level three magic, which doesn't really count. Um, well, this was, no, this was actually greed. This was. And that's for site searching. Site searching. And it was kind of uh, funny. I, you were actually like, yeah. are you sure you want to do this, Lucid? Because this seems, this is like doing site searching now is like stacking greed on top of greed. Um, yeah. And I was like, look, it's only a few turns. And it, it's really true. It's like, and I had been talking to everybody and I felt like I had a pretty good sense of where everybody's headspace was. Mm -hmm. That people really were concerned about these columns getting formed and about the, the, um, the whatchamacallit, the kaiju coming out of the sea. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I knew we probably weren't going to get coalitioned. And I, I had no idea the timing on this, but I knew it, it would be a lot better if we got some, or I thought it would be, I thought we could just afford a bit of greed here. A bit of greed here. Um, but besides for that, okay, it's greed, but it's like literally a turn of research. It's not, yeah. it's not a big deal. Um, but we, Regardless of what we do after, we've decided Blood Six and Shaitan is the thing that needs to happen right away. Um, because although there are many awesome other things that we will get, you know, in enchantment and alteration and things like that, and we can talk about those after, you know, basically army buffs, right? Or even like evocations like uh, Battlefield Wipes and Earthquake and things like that. The, the true asymmetrical power that our nation has 
in until we get to Thaumaturgy Nine and and uh, and Mass and Slave is Shaitan. Yeah, um, that is the thing that is going to allow us to fight asymmetrically against a mammon who is going to be bigger than us. They're bigger mm-hmm. than us because they're they've conquered Pempappy mm-hmm. and because they kind of have a stronger early mid game where they have like beast bats and boars mm-hmm. um and they have and they've got mother oak oh, they don't have it yet but they're about to put mother oak up yeah like, they're about to put mother oak up yeah and you know they have long dead just as much as we do um they also and the other thing too is we you did some scripting some uh some testing i should say um just to get a rough idea how their sacreds compared against ours um it's not great. and it's like it's just bloody. It's just a bloodbath. Is is the moral of the story? Um, he they we, have we come out a little bit behind though. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's close it's, enough. It would be just a disaster on each side, right? Um, and so they have like a lot of different. And also, there's a more expensive than ours too. I'll point out. Uh, yeah, that's true. Ours are. So, uh, let me find. Ours are fifty five. Theirs are sixty five. Yeah, something like that. Um. So, and it's not just that they have a lot more quality stuff on the battlefield. Like, we have good sacreds and undead. They have good sacreds and undead. But then they also have the beast bats, the boars, right? These other things, maniads. Um, The other thing, though, is that they have thaumaturgs. They have death astral holy two communions. Yeah. Which are amazing at destroying undead. And are also amazing at soul sling elite sacreds or super combatants or whatever right right or just horde of skeletons in everything so really at this point in the game mammon has a lot of advantages and so we feel that in the shortest possible term the way to overcome that is not to have like protection you know like or more you know more buffs to our troops you have to have something that is just like like I was saying before, asymmetrical, like just a thing that is a threat vector that they can't deal with easily. Um, and that's just, we're just going to steal all their mages. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the they point. also, because we don't know the timing of the war, they're mm-hmm. also, in some ways, I mean, while they'll be very useful, um, they also generate economy um, in that yeah. we'll spend blood slaves, but we're going to get a 20 research mage or a blood two blood hunter. I mm-hmm. mean, you know, like they're about as efficient as vampire lords for blood hunting. They don't cost any upkeep. Um, you know, you just you have to kill population to get them, though. Basically, that's how blood hunting works. Um, so, you know, that's a kind of upkeep in and of itself. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's the same way getting ba- vampire lords is building economy. Getting these guys is building economy, too, in a way. So um, it's going to help speed up everything that comes after it. And, and I think our so, timing, yeah. how, how long does it look like until we're there? It's looking like we're maybe six turns away from it. Well, take note. We're at 400 research per turn. We're about to hit construction six. Yeah. Um, it, let's just fast forward. Yeah, it's been, what, it's, been 30, it's been 30 turns. On average, mm-hmm. our research has been increasing by like 12 a turn, 13 a turn, right? If you divide it, mm-hmm. is that, that's about right. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at turn 30. Well, turn 30 won't count because we're just, that's yeah. when we get con. But I mean, even then it's the ramp is starting though, Zach. I think you may be right. Actually, I, th- I think it's actually 40, 400 again this turn. Yeah, oh, it's, it's less. less cause, it's less. Oh, cause yeah, you're forging cause, so much. Because yeah. we're forging so much. We actually put like, we stopped forging. We put everybody just so we would get con. Oh, this that's turn. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So actually our research per turn gain was like less than 10 per turn. It was like pretty low when you looked at how much new research per turn are we adding. It yeah. wasn't very much because like the whole first 10 or 12 turns we were reanimating so that if we get rushed, we would we would survive. Yeah. Um, we spent, you know, it was a long time before we even started researching. And then that last turn, we literally didn't forge anything so that we could hit construction six. And this turn, everybody's making lightless lanterns. Um, lightless lantern, lightless lantern, light or armor of the knights. Okay, dwarven. Ha- we're making more dwarven hammers too. I so. think we're we might be forging stuff for Penpappy here. 
Oh, right? that, that's possible hope. too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're sending this to Pinpappy with the idea he might be able to survive. He's got... Um, He's got the, the tyrants. The tyrant, yeah. flagrant tyrants. And I was like, you know, you probably can dug this mammon army unless he has drained life casters. He had drained life casters. So <laughs> Spoilers, he has drained life casters. By, yeah. by the time we sent this to him... Um, it we realize like it's not going to matter, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Okay, but no, this is the turn. So Mammon has his huge army here. Next turn, he's going to be on top of the cap. Yeah. Um. So um, yeah. So the the next like few turns is just forging a ton of land turns. Yeah. And setting up our blood economy, uh, which you can see traces of. Um to the southeast in the Donger lands. All oh, right, we've just we've started this. We've got blood economy going to... here, blood economy going here. Uh, that's it so far. But yeah. it's coming. We're 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 and I think it we're coming up on the Christmas season too when I left and yeah. I I was like, okay, we got to get you know, we I was like, we were talking about all the things we had to do and we're like, got we got to really get our blood humming cuz it's like, too, we were trying to figure out, like, what's the balance for research versus blood hunting as we go marching up to blood right. six. And versus reanimation, right? Because we have one right. mage that's got to do all three things. Right. And we were thinking, Shh, if we get attacked, like, long dead are going to be great. Like, we need some. But it's the Shaitan that are going to really do the heavy lifting. And we need mm -hmm. Shaitan. And then it's like, what's the critical path? Like, what's the short, what's the, the longest pole in the tent? to getting to a lot of Shaitan. And we were mm -hmm. like, uh, it's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood. <laughs> it's the blood. And, um, and then I went to Christmas, I didn't even bring my computer, but we were like in alignment, we need to get a lot of blood. And I come back, and this is gonna be next episode. Um, I come back and Sakane has just, I mean, he's got like, he's in the nuclear control room and he's hit like on for every single like button. And it's like the the blood hunting warning lights going like, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the red color especially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, we. Well, the other thing that's helping here is we've got a lot of forts kind of coming online, yeah. right? And so we're actually producing a ton of nurses, which are our rectapata. Yeah. Um, every they're, turn. They are the lifeblood of our nation. And there was a thing where. We it basically in the next few turns, we can easily fill up all the just researchers that were standing around doing nothing with lanterns as the lanterns come. Right. But there comes a point where everybody's got an item, and then we can only get like three more researchers every turn because we're only making like five or six nurses a turn or whatever. Yeah. And so so, but yeah, okay, so I say like we're, our focus is um, blood, but that's not quite right because we are committing to making a lantern every single turn on every boot until we run out of fire gems. Well, right. But the other thing, too, is it's not super worth it to put hammers to make sanguine dousing rods. You could just kind of. Oh, yeah. Because no, no. slaves aren't that worth it. So, yeah. so but what my, I guess what I wanted to explain in terms of the logic is. Like we have, let's say I'm inventing a number, but suppose we have 60 nurses right now and we're making five a turn just as an easy number, right? If we make 10 lanterns a turn, in six turns, all our mages are tied up, right? And yeah. so uh, we can also start sending some of those nurses, like nurses that don't have lanterns and are researching are kind of not super efficient. Mm -mm. So the idea was let's, get sanguine dousing rods on as many of those nurses as possible and go set up these uh blood hunting provinces uh so that yeah. when we finally do get blood six we can uh start pumping out the shaitan yeah and shaitan are they're not even the end goal we th this is something i i've said a few times which is we are a research nation mm -hmm. we are we look like a skeleton nation but we're a research nation. Uh, and it seems kind of weird, but I think that's still like super freaking true. Um, because once we start getting like high levels of research, we're going to just start crushing people. And the real, let's, let's save this for the next episode, but next episode, cause we're at 30, uh, like almost 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, 
let's talk about the thaumaturgy win condition. Um, yeah. Because I think that's going to be pretty interesting. And, and the, the thaumaturgy win condition and the pit stops we have to make along the way. Right. To reach that in one piece. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and not that. Yeah. All right. All right. This was a fun one. A lot, uh, uh, a bit of a talky, but uh, there's not much happening. What else are you gonna? What else are we gonna do? Yeah. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk. All right. See you guys. Take care.